Now that you're familiar with the WordPress dashboard, you're ready to start creating and publishing your content. So in this video, we'll take a look at the two primary forms of content supported by WordPress, posts and pages. Before we begin, it's important to understand the difference between posts and pages in WordPress. To do that, let's take a look at our sample website, which is using the current default theme for WordPress called 2014. Now, this new theme is ideal for creating an online magazine or news site, and when it's fully set up, it can look something like this. As you can see, it's a very modern design and is a great fit for sites with a lot of content. It allows you to highlight featured articles at the top of the home page, while other articles are displayed in a more traditional blog format, accompanied by large featured images for each article. On the left-hand side is the primary sidebar. It contains a menu for the various categories of blog posts, along with several other blocks of content called widgets, which we'll cover in a later video. There's also an optional content sidebar on the right, which can be used to show off your latest videos, photo galleries, and more. At the very bottom of the site is a footer area that can hold several more widgets. And back at the top of the page is the primary navigation menu, which contains links to the various pages in this site. Now, one of the most popular questions about WordPress is, can WordPress be used to create a regular website, or is it just for blogs? The answer is both. Now, this theme is primarily intended for online magazines or news sites, so by default, the homepage displays blog posts in chronological order. But let me switch to another example site to show you how the 2014 theme can also be used to build a more traditional business site. Remember, this site is still using the default 2014 theme, but we've customized it with a header graphic across the top of the site, which I'll demonstrate for you in a later video. On this site, I've moved the blog from the home page to its own dedicated page, and then selected a static page to serve as the home page. If you like, you could omit the blog altogether and build a site that is made up of only pages. This particular layout makes it a little easier to see the differences between posts and pages. Pages are typically used for static content or content that doesn't change very often. Pages are typically included in your site's main navigation menu, which is usually located at or near the top of the site. Some good examples of static pages are the About Us or Contact Us pages. You may have seen these on other sites. Posts, on the other hand, are blog entries or articles, and these are typically sorted chronologically with the newest post at the top. Posts can be sorted by categories, like the articles, products, or company news categories on this demo site. Each of these archive pages display all the blog posts that have been assigned to that particular category with the newest post on top. It's a good idea to include a blog in your site strategy, but you're not limited to only displaying blog posts on your home page. As you can see, WordPress enables you to use a combination of static pages and blog posts to build any type of site you can imagine. <laughs> 